time to add to my playlist one of my all-time favorite all-around tactical slash everyday carry knives. Maybe a little bit big for EDC, but still definitely an option. And that is the outstanding Lone Wolf Harzi T2 tactical knife. And this is a version in a very cool camouflage rendering. I don't even know if they make that camouflage rendering anymore, but I snagged it while they did, and I'm glad I did. It's just wicked looking. There's so many things this knife gets right, and I'm going to cover those, and it has very few bad things about it, and I'll mention those as well. So let's get going. A lot to talk about. So what category of knife is this? And again, the reason we need to categorize it is one, so I can tell you what playlist is going in on my channel page. That way you know where to go and to find a certain category of knife. And also, we're going to evaluate different blades differently depending on what their primary use is. I would term this both a folding tactical design, i.e. defensive offensive knife that we could hurt someone with if they were attacking us. Also, I will say it's also a very good option for EDC, even though the blade's a little bit bigger. So that's the category we're talking. Lots to talk about. Let's get going. First off, the weight. This is not a super lightweight knife. In fact, the FRN handled versions like this one I'm holding weigh out at 4.2 ounces. So it does exceed my arbitrary 4 ounces for a folding tactical knife. But like I've said in a lot of other videos, I don't mind going beyond that weight limit as long as the knife gives me something in return. And what the T2 gives you in return is an adequately long blade, almost four inches, just under four inches. And that's pretty good. And a blade, when we have a folding knife design that has that length of blade, then we kind of need to expect it's going to weigh out a little bit more. Now, like I've said in some of my other videos, I think the day will come when the makers get smart and they stop using traditional materials for these knives, at least for the handle portions, and use something a little bit more exotic as a liner to really get the weight down. They can keep using the S30V steel. I have no issues with that at all. I think it's great. But we should really spend some time on the handle getting the weight down. Now, that being said, we shouldn't do it at the expense of balance. And that would be a fair criticism. That if we were to make this handle super, super light, let's say it weighed half an ounce, the knife itself would be kind of out of balance. So that's something that makers need to play around with and just experiment and see what works and what doesn't work. But back to the weight on the T2, it's not outlandish at 4.2 ounces. It's actually quite reasonable. And I know a lot of you guys just don't care about it, that it's no big deal. Also, I would think this knife, the T2, would fare favorably against other heavy-duty folding tactical knives. And the reason I'm going to say that is because it has a very strong liner lock. If you looked at my Benchmade Deja Vu videos, I actually critiqued the Deja Vu or criticized the Deja Vu for having a weak liner lock, and I think that's a fair criticism. By the way, Benchmade, fix that. The Lone Wolf has no such problem. The liner lock is adequately thick, gauges very surely, and it takes a fair amount of force to disengage it, which is what I want in my heavy-duty folding tactical knife. It's very nice. So this is a he more of a heavy-duty, albeit medium-sized tactical folder. Let's talk about the blade. A lot of good things about the blade. In fact, I have no criticisms whatsoever on it. It's adequately long, so that gives us a reach and a defensive encounter. has a nice belly on it, so we could just slash cut. And also, that drop point, it would be adequate for thrust cutting as well. It's full flat ground, which I think is huge. It's a great advantage. That means it's going to slice better, cut better, and just make it an all-around better cutting knife. Another reason I favor the full flat grinding is because as that edge wears and I have to resharpen it and look at my grind video for an ex uh, explanation of this, it, we push up into the thicker portion of the blade. By a full flat grind, I just have more real estate to do that process over and over again. Whereas if I start the grind uh, on a saber ground blade, let's, I'm going to use this tie light, which I just reviewed as an example and I back that up, that angle coming from the mid portion of the spine is much more steep and therefore the angle as I regrind it and sharpen it over the years it starts out like this and it's just going to get steeper and steeper and steeper and that's because we didn't start going for our edge until mid spine on this knife. A full flat grind in my opinion and that's all it is just gives us more 
um, durability in the resharpening process. Not to mention that it cuts better and I still maintain that it's a better, um, it's just a better all around wilderness design too. It cuts wood better and this would be a knife you could actually make kindling with quite easily. So this is a black coated S30V blade and I love the coating on it. It's very nicely executed and I love the steel. I've talked a lot about S30V, have some experience with it. It's very good in edge holding, has some good rust resistance, adequately tough, great steel. And it's an upper end steel, at least as of mid-2008. So nice job on the blade. Also, they did a really good job on the dual thumb studs. They're low profile and yet they have some sharp terracing on them. I have my other camera on this one so I can't really fat, uh, close focus on it. But it does a really nice, they did a really nice job on those thumb studs. And that gets us to the deployment. When I talk about terracing, what I'm talking about is are the ridges sharp enough that we can get positive traction with our thumb? And the answer in the case of this Lone Wolf T2 is definitely. And they don't stick out that far where they're going to be bumping into stuff and causing problems. So it's just nicely executed. I love the thumb studs on the T2. And if you're left-handed, they're already there for you. Excellent job. How's the deployment speed in the lockup? I would say outstanding. On par with Benchmade, easily. It's just a fast deploying knife. It locks up solidly. There's no movement up, down, side to side. And just like all my Lone Wolf knives, I've never found a need to mess around with that pivot screw. They just come perfectly adjusted. And to be honest, I would expect it to become, come perfectly adjusted for a knife that retails at $200. Of course, it's going to be a lot less on the internet at your various knife sources. So again, your price is going to vary. But great job on the deployment, lockup, all outstanding. How about the handle? Well, this is a obviously a camouflage version, desert camo, uh, FRN handle. So fiber reinforced nylon, and I don't mind. It has good stippling on it, provides good traction. The handle itself is relatively ergonomic. I say relatively because there are some that do it better, but this is still pretty darn good. And it's comfortable in hand. And Harzi did a good job on this thumb shelf. Now granted, this is a very shallow thumb shelf through here, but on the upside, all that jimping he put in there to include the handle and the liner, notice how those two blend together, are very purposeful and they function. They really lock your thumb in and do a good job doing it. Good job. And they actually have the liner jimped as well. Not so much the choil area here, which by the way is deep enough for adequate purchase but at least to have something there. Overall, I would say the grip on that handle is excellent. I wouldn't say outstanding. I would say excellent, though. Pillar construction throughout the knife, so mud, blood, guts, whatever you got going that day will flow through the knife, easy to clean. Torx construction throughout the handle, so if you do need to take it apart, no biggie, you can take it apart. And I do recommend doing that if you dunk it in salt water. This is a stainless steel liner knife. It's not titanium, and I wish they would have drilled it out. If we look in there, at least on the non-locking side, it is not drilled out. Maybe one day I'll do that to mine and to lighten it up, maybe about a half of an ounce. But all liners should be skeletonized, much like Spyderco does. So Lone Wolf, when you watch that, you might want to improve it. And I don't think it would throw the balance of this knife out of whack. How about the clip? Well, the clip frankly is not good in my opinion uh, as far as how it's executed and I'm going to show you a different version this is a coca bolo version yes it's gorgeous I love it it's just awesome more of a collectible but that look at that clip how it's on the pivot side and we have no option to reverse it also I say it's overly large and it has way more metal in it than needs to be um, that being said it holds firmly it's strong it's wide and broad you did a good job of blackening it on these tactical versions and on this bead blasted version of the Coco Bolo, very nice. It's just nice. Here's the plain black FRN version. It's the same as that camo one, and it has a silver pocket clip. So, running out of time like I always do. By the way, nice big lanyard hole on that, very nice. Jimping on the back for a reverse grip, and the handle's big enough for impacts in a non lethal encounter, should you want to do it that way too. So that's the T2 Tactical Knife by Lone Wolf. It is an outstanding knife, has so many good features. Fast deploying, great steel, awesome blade shape, solid lockup, beautiful options and handle, uber quality, clip so-so, but overall outstanding knife for tactical and EDC. Nothing fancy.